Thankfully, this spill is a lot easier to work with. It's very strong off bat without any setup, so it was really easy to make this really good. So for the mastery tree, you want to go on to the left path and grab the um, unending flow. You'll get damage as you keep hitting the enemies without, if you don't if you don't dodge you. So you'll get increased damage over time. Then deep focus, you want to proc your enchant a lot from um, flowing dance, and then you want. The proficiency right there because um, the aggro proficiency because you'll be you want to be able to play in co-op. Well scramble gives you sacrifices gold for stats. Permanent sacrifices health for stats. Basically, if you don't get the strength boost from either one of them, you you use the uh, you go for constant attacks to get your unending flow. If you get strength from one of them, you go nuke. And then for soul tree damage two as usual, and then defense is just um is the middle path and the left path, and then. A basic explanation on how to play it, well, you can play Blade Dancer however you like, basically. It's really flexible because all the skills do a ton of damage. Like, I didn't show any mobs right now because, like, I'm gonna explain. So, when you get Blade Dancer, you unlock a one, a one, pa a one energy 12 power move called Impaling Strike. It does really solid damage, even for bosses, inflicts bleed, which is a good status. And you can use it to farm mobs, because you'll be able to use that move off the get-go no matter what. Which means you can end all mob fights on turn 1 really easily because of the 12 power. I don't know what the devs are thinking, the cooldown isn't that long for it either. Next, you have um, uh, Flowing Dance, uh, the 3 energy move. It's really good for proccing enchants. That's why you really want the deep focus one, because you can get like 13 burns in one of the, um, the blade dance. Also, I'm Venery race, so I get an increased proc chance for Inferno, which is why you really want that um, thing. It's a, basically a double synergy that works together. And now the quadruple synergy is that Dragon Blade does more damage against inflamed enemies and Dragon Ring gives me more damage. And then the Dragon Weapons will give will, will deal more damage. I think I already said that already, but it's fine. But um, basically, Permit is underrated, the Venya T3. It's 80% of your stat, of any stat, so there's a 20% chance you'll get the stat you want. But if you roll defense, you'll have at, you'll have 80% defense, which means that even if you don't block it, it's like you actually block the move. And if you block it while having the 80% defense, you basically take no damage, which means you get to play God for three turns if you roll the gamble. Basically, the gimmick of this of this build is the gamble because um, well scramble, you have a high chance of rolling your highest stat, which just happens to be strength. Meaning that you can roll wealth, wealth scramble most of the time, allowing you to nuke it without using a permith. But if you do miss wealth scramble, you should use permith because the the damage boost will make it will make it so worth. As you can see, I'm doing corrupt bosses because because this class is just really good and a really good example of a showcase. That's why we're doing the corrupt bosses with 50% more health because it, it will just be as look blade dancer just annihilates it. It sends a message that. It's really solid. Like, imagine Elementalist but melee, and and that's literally the super class. I don't know what they were thinking making this because it's, it's, it's like literally the warrior base class is so much better than the fist and the dagger one. Like literally, that's the same thing with the sword dance, blade dancer. It's literally like most supers. It's kind of dumb. And then here we have Thorian I, again. I skipped the part where I meditated twice because I already explained that in the last video and how it's really good setup. And then. Um, oh yeah, about the Stallion Core, he sometimes doesn't remove it, I don't know why. You have to get hit after you're under the threshold sometimes to lose Stallion Core. And speaking of matter of fact, we, you do, we do use Stallion Core because it gives 33% damage essentially. I mean, there's no reason not to use it, so you should use it. And then, uh, Muto, you're probably wondering what that does. You, it's, it's just an artifact shop where you can buy all the artifacts, even new ones. So if the update drops, I'll just buy all the artifacts immediately using Muto and I'll showcase them. Because you won't have to kill anything to get them. You just need to sell your artifacts to get the Primal Essence currency. And then basically, this Thorian was not corrupted, unfortunately. I didn't have the footage for the corrupt one because I forgot to record, my dumbass forgot. But at the beginning of the, of the clip, um, the setup time was similar to this one, and the Thorian was corrupt, and I managed to one-shot it with Simple Domain. Um, don't worry though, you can still nuke it with, um, uh, what's it called, Bl the, the three energy dancing flow move. Because it, it takes like 30 times, even though it's low power, it ends up being a really high power move. It's like 30 something plus power or something, if you calculate all the ticks. And you can inflict a lot of burns from that, which means that you'll be proccing Dragon and, um, Dragon Bone weapon passives if you haven't already, which means you can go from like from zero setup and gain like like 200% more damage from just using um the the, the 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 dancing flow move. So yeah, it's really cracked. 
I showcased the um, simple domain already, so this run will showcase um, the dancing flow move, the, the three energy move. I had a run where it did like 2000 damage, but unfortunately, again, that was on corrupt throwing, so I didn't have the footage. So um, yeah, this one only do like 800. The throwing doesn't have enough HP for me to test. I would do it on MV, but again, my friends. Like as you see the comp, we're not really ready for and we're not really ready for MV yet. My friends are progressing um P tint mark and all, so we don't really have enough min max shit to reliably do that. Well, we could try it, but like I don't want to risk it. So um the final note on what you should get is Alchemist. It's just free debuffs and a chance to trigger flames, which means you get damage. Also, you should get the the Blades of the World Covenant for now because um Venia it the Venian passive. I won't say what it does outside of the 20% increased shot prices, but it'll help It'll help a lot with um, managing wealth scramble. And that's why you should get Blades of the World, just get it. You'll Trust me, it'll work out. Anyways, you also get the Gilded Strike moves, which scales off strength, which means you'll be doing a lot of damage with that move. I mean, it's the same thing as Impaling Strike, just one more energy, but it's another good chip move. And since um, Never Ending Flow Mastery makes you basically elementalist, like you do really solid damage in everything, but you won't be able to nuke. Fortunately, like, that my build right here, it'll allow- it gives me the opportunity to nuke if I roll either the Wealth Scramble or the Permif to Strength. So, yeah, that's about it. Enjoy. Thank <laughs> you. 